So the Evercade, the cartridge-based handheld, we just spoke about that the other week. There was a lot of questions, not as many answers as we'd like. I did have somebody reach out to me and offer some information concerning who was involved with this device because at first I was like, I don't know what kind of industry pull they, these guys have. I don't know who they're connected to. I don't know who is involved. I just knew looking at their website with the MS Paint looking <laughs> images, I was just like, I don't know about this thing. But Evercade just dropped an update with some cool new news, some information, pricing, some games that are going to be released, and maybe a few more little tidbits. We'll take a look at that in a second, but I wanted to speak briefly on this before we jump into that. So my source is telling me, after looking into some things, that the people who are involved with this device is going to be P-Cube, who run Funstock Retro. So Funstock Retro... It's like a UK-based, you know, Europe's number one retro gaming destination. They sell plug-and-play, uh, the ass games devices. They sell retro bit stuff. Um, they sell tons of things, you know, anything you could think of, they're going to sell it. And they also published this handheld, uh, this Atari handheld, which their link just took me to Amazon. Um, but as you see, it says by P-Cube. So these guys were all involved in this. They've made handhelds in the past. Very interesting stuff. I don't deal with fun stock retro. I'm in the U.S., but hey, at least we know who's involved. Um, this individual, he asked to not be named, but he had mentioned um, last year at E3, he had spoke to these guys, and they were talking about putting out their own dedicated handheld, um, and it turns out this is what it is. So all these websites... Uh, he's telling me after he looked into it, they're all linked. The Evercade, Funstock Retro, P-Cube, which P-Cube runs Funstock Retro. So there we go. We know who's involved. And it's actual company that's been around. Not some dude in his, his basement or garage at his mom's house. An actual company. And, I mean, that's good. I'm glad that we figured that one out. So we know it's not just some half-assed effort. Um, I mean, it could still be a half-assed effort, but... At least we know it's not just a joke. We know it's not just something, you know, to, to try to do a Kickstarter campaign or even worse, an Indiegogo campaign. So let's jump into the Evercade update. Now, they did put up some images, which I find interesting. Um, let's go ahead and get, let's get to the, let's get to the, oh, come on. I'm skipping around here. My fingers ain't working, bro. <laughs> But let's take a look. They got six images up, and they have a list of games. But here we go. These are renders, though. Quite obvious looking at it. These are renders. But, hey, looks a little better. Or not a little. It looks a hell of a lot better than the, the little silhouetted MS Paint image that they put up previously. So definitely cool. Looking at this thing, at first I was like, man, is this going to look the same as this little handheld that they made? And no, it does not. Um, you know, obviously there's only so many ways you could do a handheld, but it definitely has its own little form factor to it, different layout and buttons. Cause at first I was like, okay, if these guys are involved, are they just going to rebrand this thing? Are they just going to, you know, kind of modify the shell a little bit? And it doesn't look like that's ex exactly what's happening here. Um, but there we go. Cool little red and white aesthetic D pad menu button. Um, and then like start and select a B XY buttons really cool. And then they're showing that you do have four by three. And if you are a, a, a beast, a bad person, I don't freaking know. Cause man, when people want to play in 16 by nine, 16, nine people throw a fit. They're like blasphemy, dude. You can't do that. That's not the original aspect ratio. What you doing, man? And I get it, man. But Hey, <laughs> It ain't none of your business how people play. I mean, I play in, you know, 4-3, but still, man, options. Some people want to fill that screen. Some people want to play in the original aspect ratio. Leave them alone. It's their own life choices, man. Jeez, so much craziness out there. But me, I don't judge. Actually, that's probably a lie. I probably do judge. I don't want to be a hypocrite and lie. I can be a dick, man. Jeez. Here's the back of the uh, Evercade. It looks like in this image, like 
the Evercade logo is etched in or it's not. I always say etched when it comes to plastic. You know they're not etching it. It's just part of the mold. Stupid. But yes, <laughs> it looks like uh, it's kind of indented in however you want to say it. And that's cool. I like that. You know, give a little branding there. We got a little uh, micro USB charging headphone jack right in the butt of the system. Bloop. And then a plus and minus volume button. Nice. Prefer buttons over, you know, the little old school slider things. Here's front picture. So, yeah, what we got A, B, X, Y. Wouldn't it be? Man, they reversed it on me. They reversed it. But hey, it's all right. It should work. Should work. I just, I'm always accustomed to the Nintendo. I'm seeing if I have a Super Nintendo controller lying around. But I'm always accustomed to the, the Nintendo button layout. Um, and then there we go. A little cartridge, little like almost looks like a leapfrog cartridge. Atari Collection 1. So obviously, that's what's going to be on the first collection. We'll take a look at that right now. But a little bigger picture. I do kind of like, you know, how that cartridge looks, slides in there. Um, I'm all for this. You know, I did kind of hate on these guys a little bit, but at the same time, intrigued. And seeing this and knowing what the price is going to be um, and knowing that it's cartridge based, I, I really find that cool. I mean, so, hey, I'm I'm a little intrigued. We'll have to see, man. But with these guys having, oh, and here's the pricing. With these guys having a big presence in the UK and distributing and all that kind of stuff, I mean, they should be able to get this out there to everybody through, like, Amazon and whatnot. Um, I don't think this device, uh, this Atari Retro handheld, i never seen this available anywhere else but the UK I've seen it. I almost ordered it before to do a review on, but I was just like, ah, the reviews already are pretty, pretty bad. So hoping this Africade is not that bad. Like, let's go to the website. We got to peep that out real quick. So, man, see, when I go to Amazon and I see less than four solid stars, that's when I start jumping into those reviews. There's only 21 reviews for this thing. Atari is so nearly goody. The frick? After one year, this thing finally alive. Screen is very small. I thought it was two by four inch. What the hell are you thinking, bro? But it's a 2.4 inch. No crap. How would it be a two by four? Like one side's two inches, the other edge is four inches. Like four inches would be like freaking that, dude. Come on now. <sighs> Control's not great. Main downside is lack of a few big games. This includes no Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Vanguard, or even E.T. Why would you get E.T.? Okay, some of those complaints are just whatever. This one, two stars. What have they done to Atari? Oh, dear. I've waited over a year for this when it finally arrived. I was excited. Oh, dear. What a letdown. First off, the screen is awful. Playable, but awful. No AV lead included. And all the ones I have don't work. They say it's a dedicated lead. Looks quite nice from a distance until you have it in your hands and feel the cheapo plastic it's made from. Controls are shot are shocking. And sometimes here we gotta we gotta get up there. I can't even see this. Controls are shocking and sometimes move on its own. Game list is shocking apart from Asteroids Adventure, Yars Revenge, Haunted House. What happened to Space Invaders? Pac-Man. Man, all these people are saying the same thing. Is that the same person? Jeez. The buttons are let down. Uh, product endorsed by Atari. Okay, the games are well over 30 years old, but what lets it down is the control buttons. Don't waste cash on this. Get a Neo Geo Mini. What? Okay. Should have listened to the reviews. Disappointed screen dimensions are clearly stated, but in your hand against the massive case size, it's tiny. Uh, and worse is the controls are unresponsive. So... I kind of that kind of raises a little bit of concern, man. If you guys, the company who's behind the Evercade, produced this piece of junk that the you know the twenty one people who decided to review it doesn't seem all that great. But again, I don't I don't know. I'm gonna give them benefit of the doubt. Maybe they got this thing figured out. Um, I'm intrigued. Cartridge slide. It's got an L and R button too. Intrigued, but here's the pricing standard or premium includes one cartridge. 
here you go. I'm I'm only concerned with the uh, U.S. dollars because I don't know what any of this means, man. My bad. 80 bucks for a standard one cart bundle. So that's nice. They get you started with one cartridge. Premium includes three cartridges. So you're spending an extra $20 for two more carts. So $10 a cart. Now I'm hoping it's not all just Atari licensed stuff. So obviously, you know, we've already went over all this ever expanding library. It's yours to keep officially licensed content, no internet required. And you could save your progress, bro. But here we go. Atari Collection 1. Officially licensed 20 games cartridge. So I'm curious, is this the cartridge that comes with it and the standard one? 20 games? If you're... See, Atari games. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. My first console was the Atari 2600. Do I have any desire to play Atari in this day and age? No, I do not. I cannot play Atari... For the most part, occasionally there's a couple games that are okay, but I just, I cannot play Atari 2600 games. They have not aged well at all. And if you tell me they have aged well, then you're just kidding yourself. Some people are still very nostalgic for the stuff. I should be too, because I grew up with it, but I mean, it was my first console, but I realized like, Back then, we had to really use our imagination with these games, and now they just don't respond well. They don't play well. I don't want to look at two colors on the screen. Don't want to see just blocks of things, squares. I don't have an imagination anymore, so I can't, I can't imagine having fun with this, with the 2600 anyway, for the most part. Some people really love it, and that's great. Me, personally, I don't care for the 2600. I just don't. So that leads me to... Hey, I'm actually pretty happy to see that they have Atari 7800 on here. Food Fight is an awesome game. I was just playing that at uh, uh, the Arcade Expo, what, a, a month ago? Ninja Golf. Holy crap. It's going to be worth it just for Ninja Golf. That is pretty cool to see that on there. Aqua Venture, Sword Quest, Earth World. Where's the other Sword Quest games? Uh, I don't. Uh, it's just the 2600 stuff I don't care about. We've got Centipede Adventure, Alien Brigade for the 7800, Asteroids, um, Missile Command, Crystal Castles, cool, Food Fight, I'm, I'm kind of excited for that, Desert Falcon, Motorcycle, Canyon Bomber, Gravitar, Double Dunk, Ninja Golf, Steeplechase, no thanks, uh, Night... Like, look at this box art. Like, it looks like it's all creased down there. Can you find a better box art? Night Driver. Unless they just don't, like, maybe there's just not, like, really good scans of a lot of this stuff anymore. Tempest, Video Pinball, Aqua Venture, uh, Yars Return, and Sword Quest. That's on the first 20. So they still have a couple more um, companies to announce, I believe. More to be announced soon. Confirmed publishers. Atari, but they've said they have, like, three of them. So, yes, we already have several. We will be announcing three this month, including one classic platform holder. So they're going to be announcing three. So I, I'm curious to see who else. Right now, I am very intrigued. Very intrigued. But the things that are making me not as excited is Atari. I'm just being honest. Atari's all over the place. I don't care too much. Um, and then the other thing is their previous handheld, the retro handheld Atari console, which has overwhelmingly negative reviews that mention the same thing, buttons, responsiveness, that kind of thing that kind of throws me off a bit. Um, and, and I mean, that's about it. Like, I just want to see who else is going to be involved. What other cartridges, what other publishers, if, I can get the premium version. I mean, I'm not going to go with the standard. I'll, I'll pay for the premium version, hundred bucks, $10 a cartridge. Now the Atari stuff's going to be a dime a dozen. You're going to get a shit ton of Atari on one cart. Like here, you got 20 games. So I'd imagine if going forward with other consoles, you know, the cartridges might not have as many games on them, but if they're charging like $10 a cart and the carts have at least like maybe like five to 10 games and they're solid ass games. Like I, I could be down with that. 
Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see. Definitely excited to hear more. Was very skeptical to begin with, and some of this information has changed my views a little bit. I will keep you guys informed. Evercade, I think they actually sent me a note the other day, like, hey, take a look at this, and I, I didn't really get a chance, but hey, they just put up this whole new announcement. So I'm following these guys, going to keep keep tabs on it, let you know. Let me know. Are you guys excited for this thing? Are you going to buy one at 80 or 100 bucks, one cart, three carts? Are you excited for the return of cartridge-based handheld gaming? <laughs> I know I am to a degree. I hope these guys nail it, but it's still a wait-and-see type thing. So really do appreciate you guys. I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-byes and Evercade. Boom. Bye.